It's Texas A&M's 2020 National Signing Day Special, presented by Mustang Cat. We'll have a rundown of the Aggie signing class, and Jimbo Fisher joins in studio. We welcome you all into 12th Man Studios in the south end zone of Kyle Field, where I'm Will Johnson alongside former A&M and Dallas Cowboy quarterback Stephen McGee. This is the Aggies signing day special for 2020, and it's presented to you by Mustang Cat. A&M has completed their most recent signing class. These newest Aggies will help Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M in the SEC and hopefully on into maybe the college football playoffs here in the next few years. But it's a little different these days, Stephen. A lot of these classes, the bulk of it at least, come to a team in February, or excuse me, in December. It's February where you wrap it up. A&M got 23 in December, had to close strong. Feel like they did that and wrapped up this 2020 class quite well. Yeah, another really impressive haul by Jimbo. And I think it's a, a class that addresses a lot of needs for this football team. You knew you had to get running backs. You always need offensive and defensive linemen. The battle in the trenches, you lose guys to injuries. And then you lose a couple of wide receivers early as well to the draft. And so all of a sudden, he goes out and fills that need and he closes and gets some really, really good guys at the end as well. And so Jimbo has proven time and time again that he is a very, very good recruiter. Closer, no He's doubt. He's the closer. <laughs> so let's start by showing you how the Aggies ended. We're going to introduce you to the February signees that closed this class out. And we will begin with a running back, Darvin Hubbard. He's from the desert, February signee here. Rivals rated Darvin Hubbard the top-rated running back in the state of Arizona. Yeah, and it's impressive that Jimbo is able to go out and get guys in a bunch of different states, top rated guys in their own state with a lot of other home schools trying to sign this guy. And here comes Texas A&M and Jimbo Fisher and signs yet another impressive prospect uh, with as much attrition that this running back group has had. It is vital that they sign a bunch of running backs. I would not be surprised uh, if they try to con continue to add more and more to this fold this year and next year's class. February signee McKinley Jackson on the defensive side of the ball up front from Loosedale, Mississippi, one of the top 100 players, period, in the country. Yeah, Will, and this is the guy that I'm probably most excited about. You talk about closing out and finishing strong, and this guy does it for me. You can never have too many defensive linemen, especially when you have the caliber of defensive line that this current A&M group has. They're three and done. They're gone to the NFL. And you've got to have the next pipeline of guys coming in. McKinley Jackson, a guy that can push the pocket and win up front and demand a double team. Feels a little bit like Bobby Brown. McKinley Jackson chose A&M over Alabama on signing day, February. So did yep. Bobby Brown. <laughs> and we know what Bobby Brown is. Yeah, they're going, to be, they're going to be a beast to deal with up front. <laughs> so now that we know the February signees, the Aggie 2020 class is complete. And we're going to go ahead and run down all of them for you. And let's begin on the offensive side of the football. There's some great skill position players in this class, but that's not going to matter unless you got the guys up front that can block for them. So we start on the offensive line, and it begins with Josh Bankhead, who played for an Aggie in Lonnie Madison at College Park High School in the Woodlands. Bankhead was a finalist for the Touchdown Club of Houston's Offensive Player of the Year Award in 2019. Smart Chabuzo, a wise pickup for Jimbo Fisher and his staff. He's out of Hightower High School in the Houston area, highly recruited as he checks in at 350 pounds. Seven SEC schools offered Smart Chabuzo. Jordan Jefferson, he's not going far to play in Aggieland. He's from just down the road in Navasota, played on the Rattlers varsity team as a freshman. Chris Morris, Memphis, Tennessee, was one of the South's most sought-after offensive linemen, an Under Armour All-American 10 SEC schools offered. And Akinola Agenbayi, another guard on the offensive line, just like Chris Morris. In fact, Morris and Agenbayi were the top two rated guards in the country, according to rivals. Then up front, also in ways, is a tight end in Blake Smith from South Lake Carroll High, a state power. Six foot four, 257 pounds. Blake Smith, the tight end. And my goodness, we know how Jimbo Fisher wants an abundance of tight ends and how he uses these guys. Yeah, if I'm a tight end, I'm begging to get in the door here at Texas A&M. You look at this offense the last two years and the effect of the tight end and then the career path that these guys are now having, Jay Sternberger and then Jalen Wademeyer last year. There are very few college programs out there that have 
to offer what Jimbo can offer them uh, as a tight end in this offense. And then, of course, up front, Will, uh, this is a great group of young guys. We talk about depth on the offensive and defensive lines. Coach Henson's got some really good guys and pieces to plug in as he tries to put together this puzzle of the offensive line. Guys can play tackle, guard, center. There's a lot to work out this spring up front, but he's got some really, really good young guys. Pass catchers, they're in abundance. A lot of skill guys in this class. Damon Demas, somebody everybody loves. Yeah, Damon Demas is an easy guy to like. Uh, and as an Aggie fan, a guy that stayed committed uh, through the whole process, everybody in the country wanted this guy because he is a true difference maker. Damon Demas is tall, he's fast, he can go up and high point the football. He's everything you want in that go-to wide receiver. This guy will have a big effect on the field this fall. Other wide receivers, Moose Muhammad out of North Carolina. He's an Army All-American, 1,200 plus receiving yards last year, 17 touchdowns. Devin Price, he's playing right here in his hometown. He's the son of A&M's defensive ends coach, Terry Price, hails from A&M Consolidated High School where he had 14 touchdown catches a year ago. Move it to the running backs and it starts with Devon Achain, who actually lit up Kyle Field in a high school playoff game here just a couple of months ago. Yeah, he's got a good start on it already. Devon Achain is probably my favorite signee in this class. He is a difference maker. You turn on the tape and you get a, a can of popcorn and you enjoy the show. This guy is incredible. He's all over the field. He, he runs it out of the backfield. He's between the tackles. He's catching the ball out of the backfield. He's taking it to the house. He's got some shake, but then he's got the speed. Going to run track here, 100 meters, 200 meter guy. Ran 10.5, 20.5 in the 200 meters. This guy is the type of speed and twitch that this offense desperately needs right now because he can take a bubble screen 80 yards to the house and flip the script on a ball game. DeAndre Jackson is the other running back. He's out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, 20 touchdowns his senior year at Stevenson High School. And the quarterback from East Texas, Longview, Haynes King. Now, how about Haynes King? This guy's just a winner. He's got charisma. He's got something to him. He's a coach's kid. He loves the game. And I think what really surprised me the most, he goes to the Elite 11 with some really, really good quarterbacks in his class, and he steals the show. The top quarterback at the Elite 11. And this guy, I think, comes in and is a factor. We have a veteran quarterback in Kelamon, but you're looking forward to next year, a pending quarterback competition, potentially a takeover for Kelamon. This guy brings a lot of skill set. He can run. You know he knows football. He's been a coach's kid, been around it his whole career. And he's productive in the passing game as well. He's a complete football player. Calzada, Haynes King. James Foster, got some really, really good young signal callers. Go over to the defensive side of the football and up front, introduce you to Fadil Diggs, the 2019 Gatorade Player of the Year in New Jersey after he had 19 sacks his final season of high school ball. Then there's Braden Mowry of Katie Taylor High School, 98 tackles last year, 22 for lost yardage. On the interior, Isaiah Rakes, also from Jersey, ready to play up front for the Aggies. Not only did he pressure the QB on the defensive side, he rushed for eight touchdowns offensively. And Dallas Walker is out of Nashville, big frame, stout up front, also had 12 pass catches. There's a lot of big guys catching the ball. But the guy you like up front is Donnell Harris, one of the best players in the state of Florida. Yeah, it's the Diggs-Harris combination that really excites me most. Getting some guys in here that can rush the passer, the most important position on the field other than the quarterback is the guy that rushes the quarterback. It's a Von Miller type presence. These athletic, long guys that can bend around the edge and get home to the quarterback. Donnell Harris, his tape flashes and pops. Pass rusher, and then of course, Fadell Diggs as well. That is probably the best combination of pass rushers signed in the country, and it has me excited. You've got to be able to rush four in the SEC West and get home to the quarterback. You can't force your defensive coordinator to bring the house to try to get home and get pressure. Linebackers are Antonio Doyle Jr. He's from St. Louis, an Under Armour All-American, as well as Edger and Cooper, rivals top 250 list. Cooper is coming to A&M out of Covington. Louisiana. The defensive backs start with Jalen Jones, Cibolo Steele from the San Antonio area. An incredible talent already on campus. Yeah, Jalen Jones, another long defensive back. We have a lot of those guys already, but Jalen Jones really pops on camera because of the strength of 
is using his hands and jamming guys in the line of scrimmage, being able to play man-to-man -man coverage. Not many defensive clips. They tried to avoid him clearly throughout the year. This guy has as many uh, offensive highlights, catching the ball and in kick returns as he did at defensive highlights his senior year. I think he's going to be a difference maker. I think this guy, you can never have too many DBs, right? You're playing nickel defense. Will, you know that. Five, six DBs on numerous snaps throughout the game, rotating those guys in. Jalen Jones is a good young talent. Rounding out the secondary, Brian George, second team JUCO All-American last year at Highland Community College in Kansas. Josh Moten, among the rivals, top 250 nationally. He's out of Waldorf, Maryland. And Antonio Johnson, Jr., the safety in the bunch, out of East St. Louis, 98 tackles on defense in 2008 to go along with 39 catches on offense. Those are their guys. That's the 2020 class for Texas A&M. Yet again, a highly rated class. And when we come back here on our National Signing Day special presented by Mustang Cat, we will visit with Aggie head coach Jimbo Fisher on his newest call. Texas A&M's National Signing Day special is presented by Mustang Cat, a proud supporter of Texas A&M Athletics. Let's do the work. We welcome you back in to our National Signing Day special. Will and Steven still with you, and we are now joined by our head coach, Jimbo Fisher, another great haul for Texas A&M in 2020. And coach, we know how it works. December's when this is usually done, or at least the bulk of it, but you got to close strong like we were talking about earlier. So let's go ahead and discuss what you did close with. And let's start with that running back from Arizona. You got Darvin Hubbard coming. Yes, I mean, very good player. Was originally as a junior was committed to Ohio State. Originally we moved to Arizona as a kid, was growing up in Ohio, but really tough guy, athletic, can catch the ball extremely well, 195 pounds, going to probably be a 205 to 10 pound back that can change direction, really good skills. Uh, as far as out of the backfield, catching the football, runs between the tackles very well can really stick his foot in the ground chain and can lay, play with power, can play with power and make you miss and then, you know, hits the home runs when he does. We think he's an excellent player and, uh, and good pass blocker. I think he's going to be a complete back. On the defensive side of the ball, Coach McKinley Jackson. Listen, we all know this. The game starts up front. You like to put, when, you, when you're good up front, everything else changes. I mean, to be able to rush the pass or where to play the run, and you can play the box short and double team guys if you have great receivers and can still create pressure. And McKinley, he's, he's unique in this. He's 310 to 15 pounds, but I mean, powerful, can run, is a complete run stopper, big features, but also has inside pass rush ability. And that's not always true with your run stopping guys. He's a, he's a three technique that can really get on the edge. If he had to, he could play a seven or a six and run downs and be outside. He's that athletic, but has power. Uh, great player can bend. I think it's sky's the limit for him. I mean, you got to go back to the quarterback. Now we're going to the December signees. This is who you already had in the class. And Haynes King, there's just some intangibles there that even go beyond the talent and the numbers and the stats. Exactly. I mean, it, this guy, talent-wise, is, is really athletic, can throw the football. But his, as I say, hard wiring is the way you want it. He, you know, he's an early entry guy. He's in class. He's doing the things he has to do now. And all the reports I get, the coach says he wins every drill by 10 yards. I mean, he's out in front. Everything's a Super Bowl. Everything's a national championship. Every every play, he's a coach's son. So there's an intangible there that you just, it's hard to create and teach. And he's been around ball. He understands ball and an ultimate competitor. And I always believe this. When your quarterback's the ultimate competitor and tough, that whole team becomes like that because he makes them be like that. And, and I, I think he has a great chance. Now, he has to go play, but he's doing the things he has to do, and we're very happy with him. Coach, speaking of your quarterback, Kellen Mond, now going year four as a starter here at A&M year three in your offense. How does a veteran quarterback like Kellen get better? Well, I think it, it really evaluating what he's doing and, and where we have to go as a team in our offense to create plays that make us win the football game. And I mean, he's doing a great job. Kellen's been good. But I mean, I think we can get the ball down the field better, get the more vertical passing game. And we have to do that in two other areas. People always say, well, the quarterback, well, you got to get open. You got to make, and the other thing in today's world, you got to make contested catches. Yeah. Those 50-50 those balls have become, you got to make them 70, 30, 80, 20 balls. And that's what you're doing a lot. And you got to protect those plays. But I think his ability to lead and compete, though, is, is Kellen's heart, his soul, and everything. And there's always things you get better. And decision making, just processing the information, knowing what we want, how we want it, the little subtleties of the offense, getting the ball out of your hand quicker, getting it to the playmakers. And I always say with accuracy, when the guy gets the ball. And that's something we talk about all the time. So those short runs can become long ones. But there's a lot of things we can do there. Coach, everybody wants to talk about the explosive pass plays like you just mentioned, but how important is that offensive line gelling and playing well together? Well, that's going to be the key because, listen, you, you, to create those plays, you've got to have time. 
They've got to understand to create that. And I think in the running game and being able to create the run, and, and I think they're getting better and better. That, you know, a lot of these guys are going to be three-year starters. So it's, you know, we, the experience of knowing what to do and how to do it. And they're growing up physically, knowing, understanding how to, uh, they're growing, turn into grown men, as I say. When you hit that 21, 200-year-old age, you, your body changes. And hopefully the physicality will come with it. Devon Chain, speaking of an explosion, he exploded four times at Kyle Field in a high school playoff game. Really a fifth, but one was called back. There's a special talent. He really is. I mean, I, he can play in the back. He, here's the thing. He can play so many positions. He, even though people say, well, he's a smart – listen, he's going to be – he's 182 pounds. But he is a hard, rocked-up 182 pounds. And he's not a tall guy. He's 5'9", but it doesn't mean he's little. His features are strong. He's very powerful. He's very dynamic. Not only running, but he can run between the tackles. He's not a guy that has to be outside. He runs between the tackles, can make you miss, can drop a shoulder. Th then he can get outside, of course, we know. But he can line up as a receiver and run routes. Has very good ball skills, whether you throw it to him out of the backfield, whether you throw it to him in a matchup with a linebacker in space. And then when he, you know this, when he gets ahead of you, you're not catching him. I mean, he's, he's arguably one of the fastest guys in this country. Coach Anaya Smith, another exciting playmaker. He's kind of done it all, I feel like, as already in his young career. What primary role do you see him filling next year? You know, it, it was a, there was a point in this. I wanted to move him into running back during the season. I didn't want to make that change during the year. And we, we did it in a bowl game, and it was something I wanted to experiment with to get more touches to him. He, is a, he naturally runs the football out of the backfield. He did in practice. He did in that game. The physicality blocked well. And I think you can get him more touches, but then you can line him up out wide. And you know, and you know this, even backs that can catch, they have route running ability, but do they have wide receiver route running ability? He does. So you can be in 11 personnel, 21 personnel, which really can, can conflict the defense and the matchups you can create with him. So, you know, I think going forward, we're going to leave him in the backfield, but then but never take away that receiver role and then add touches to him plus the return game and his physicality. See, see people think because he's true, but he's 190 pounds. And I think he's, by next year he'll be in the 192 to 195 range, and that's plenty big enough. In the spirit of the erasers, you talk about the game changers. Uh, the guys you signed in the secondary, all the way from Jalen Jones, Josh Moulton, Brian George, Antonio Johnson. That, that's in the spirit of these erasers. There you are, because, changers. listen, you got, you got to, your parameters, you got to have those front guys, but the parameters on defense, how can you cover? If I'm going to expose guys and get in man coverage, do I have guys that can make plays that I can lock up on guys? So when I bring blitzes and I know that corner is one-on-one, -on -one, that safety's got to play a tight end or he's got to play a back, though, you know, it's great to blitz, but if they can get it out and, and I can't cover them, it does us no good. I think these guys are, are really, really, really good. I think Jalen Jones, this guy's got length, he's got size, he can change direction. And we list, he's listed as safety, he's going to play corner. He's a corner. He, he's a big body guy that can run, great intangibles, but has a physicality to play corner and tackle like a safety. And if you have to match him up inside on a tight end or a bigger receiver, he can go do that. Brian George, I think one of the best pure cover guys in the country. I, I thought was the best cover corner we saw in junior college football. I mean, can run, can really run, add speed, add size, adds toughness, competitiveness. I think it has a tremendous future. Johnson, really safe. I mean, St. Louis, East St. Louis. Them guys in East St. Louis are tough now. I'm going to tell you that. And you watch, you got to remember, he had a thousand yards receiving. He had over a thousand yards receiving, plus the picks and the plays on defense. He's a two way guy, got great ball skills, tremendous size at 6'2, maybe 6'3, 6'2 and change probably. 195 pounds, can cover ground, can tackle you, likes the physicality. And Moten is a guy that can play corner, can play safety, can play nickel. Great, intelligent guy, very smart guy, athletic, great balance, body control. And so in today's game, to limit guys to, to certain positions, it's hard because it's almost like a matchup game. It's like basketball has become. I got to go match guys, and when they have that, and then to do that, you got to be physical to go inside, but you got to be athletic to go outside. And we think we've got that in this class. Mm -hmm. Coach, as always, appreciate the time. Great class again. We'll see you. Congrats. Thank April you 18th, Maroon and White. It won't be here long. Will yeah, it? not not at all. Jimbo Fisher, right here on our national signing day special. Texas A&M Signing Day Special is presented by Mustang Cat, a proud supporter of Texas A&M Athletics. Let's do the work. Welcome back. The 2020 football season is a much anticipated one at Texas A&M. It marks the third year under head coach Jimbo Fisher, and the Aggies are completely ingrained in his culture and system. They return a lot of what they had in 2019. So we talked to some of the current Aggies a couple of veterans and some of the rising sophomores about what's upcoming this 2020 recruiting class and spring ball, which begins in mid-March. They've all been through the recruiting process before. What led them to A&M? 
coming here on my official visit and uh, talking, having a one-on-one -on -one with Coach Fisher. And um, he just pretty much explained to me the whole offense. And uh, just a light bulb went off, and I was like, man, this is the place. I've always loved A&M. Like, I had this offer since my freshman year in high school, so I wouldn't commit there, but mom just had me stick it out and everything, so I just was patient. My family can come see me play, you know, it's just a blessing, so, you know, why not a &M? You know, it's SEC, I can rep my state. When it came to A&M, you know, for me it was kind of a no-brainer, you know, being in the SEC, um, staying in Texas, which is close to my family, uh, and also having this family-oriented, uh, you know, pretty much vibe around College Station and um, pretty much, you know, what it can do for me, you know, after and once I graduate. They've also been through a season of college football, some more than others. What advice do they have for their newest teammates? When freshmen get here, they think football, um, playing at SEC, uh, is such a big deal. On it, it's a big deal, but at the same, at the end of the day, it's just playing football. Um, you know, there's there no there's no need to, you know, add any extensive pressure on yourself. Or um, at the end of the day, you're just playing the game that you love. Be mentally prepared. Be confident in yourself. You know what I'm saying? Just learn what you need to learn, like right before the season starts, and just you're gonna pick up everything as the season progresses. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody. Everybody um, grow, grows, it changes, and so just be prepared for everything. There are a lot of members of the 2020 class already in Aggieland. Who's already impressing? I think some of the receivers are exciting. Uh, obviously, Moose Muhammad's the guy who already early enrolled, and um, you know you see his athleticism. I saw Moose Muhammad catch some routes, and that dude looks like. He's ready to go. <laughs> Isaiah Rakes, he definitely works hard every day. He get after it, and Jalen Jones definitely. Ultimately, youngsters and veterans will come together with a clear vision of where they want to go in 2020. Oh man, we got a great opportunity. I think we can do a lot of good things. We just have to have the right mindset. Sky is the limit. It's definitely the limit. We have a great opportunity, and we can do something special here in Aggie Land. But we're gonna take it game by game, day by day. Practice by practice, rep by rep. Kind of one of those years where, you know, I feel like a lot of a and fans have been waiting for. Um, you know, with you know, Jimbo coming in with his third year, um, we got some veteran guys, you know, me, uh, Jamon, Keldra Carper on defense, Buddy Johnson on defense, uh, adding some, you know, explosive freshmen and, you know, guys who just got done with their freshman season coming to their sophomore season with, you know, Anias and uh, Isaiah Spiller. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to a really good season, but you definitely have to put the work in first. We've got Stephen McGee with us one last time. What about you? What's a must for the Aggies spring ball, those 15 sessions they get? I think it all starts up front, this offensive line, figuring out all the pieces where everybody's going to plug in and fit in in the big scheme of things. you got to protect Kellen Mond, and you got to be able to run the football to have success. You know that. And then number two, it's playmaker positions. You got to figure out who's going to establish running back depth behind Isaiah Spiller. And then at wide receiver, who can take the game over. You got a lot of young guys coming in the fold, several really good classes in a row with some good young wide receiver prospects. And then on the defensive side of the ball, it's those pass rushers, right? We talked about game changers on the defensive side, the guys that get after the quarterback. I'm excited to see who is going to take the next step and fill these needs. Maroon and White game, April 18th, three straight home games to kick off the 2020 season. It begins September 5th. See you then.